When I talk to people about canning, they often say, oh, I, I could never do that. Um, you know, I would be afraid I'd poison my family. I'd open up a jar, it would have that botulism in it, and my entire family would die or get very sick. Because, you know, the talk about canning, home canning, and botulism is very prevalent uh, in the literature. But, you know, I thought, I'm going to look into this a little bit more. How often does botulism happen in the United States from home canning? Is it really something we should fear? Especially if we are following the National Preserva Food Preservation Center's guidelines for canning. Is it something we have to worry about? Well, some of you may be familiar with this. Yes, that's Botox. And you may have yourself or friends or relatives that have gotten an injection right here, take away wrinkles and up here, you know, the frozen forehead type of thing. And Botox is also used for medical purposes. It's used for migraines and neck spasms and other medical problems. But I think most people know about Botox because of the cosmetic application. And it's a very expensive drug. But Botox is made from the Clostridium botoxylin, which, yep, is what botulism comes from. So Botox and home canned food botulism have a lot in common. The difference is one can make you feel feel like you look more attractive, whether you do or not, I don't know, and the other one can kill you. So let's talk a little bit more about botulism. The symptoms of botulism usually start with, you know, weakness in the muscles that control your eyes, your face, mouth, and throat, and then that weakness may spread to the neck, arms, torso, and legs. And then when it's really bad, it can also weaken the muscles involved in breathing, which can be life-threatening. And when any of you have these signs starting, you need to go to the ER immediately. So those are the symptoms of botulism. Now let's look into some of the incidents of botulism in the United States. And I made up this handy dandy chart that is showing the latest records we have is 2017. And these are um, amounts, data I should say, kept by the CDC and their National Botulism Surve Surveillance. So should be pretty accurate. But I put these numbers in a chart so you can understand them a little better. There are actually five types of botulism. We've been talking about the foodborne one but there's also infant botulism, which we're not sure how the uh, bacteria actually gets in the infant's intestine. And then there is wound botulism, and that is it gets in through a wound, um, a lot of times by uh, drug users. And if you've had surgery, it could happen, or if you've had a traumatic injury. There's also adult intestinal toxemia, where it gets into the intestine and makes another toxin and spreads. And then there's itrogenic botulism, which actually could be caused by that cosmetic. It could be too much injected for your face, for a wrinkle, or for a migraine. And that can also cause fatal botulism poisoning. So let's go back to that chart and look at the years for a little more in depth. There were 15 foodborne botulism cases and they were all reported from California and 10 of them was for an outbreak of hot nacho cheese dip bought at a gas station convenience store and one person actually died from that. And none of the five remaining were caused by improperly home canned goods. The two were from an outbreak linked to an herbal deer antler tea. One was from a suspected store-bought soup can with bulging lid, but was not available for testing. And two were not linked to a known food source. And Alaska had three from an outbreak linked to seal blubber with seal oil, and one was linked to dried herring in seal oil. Okay, you're going to see this. There's always quite a few in Alaska, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail at the end. Wow. 2016 had 29 confirmed foodborne 
botulism cases. Mississippi had most of them, 19 of fact, and it was made, or I should say the botulism occurred because of Pruno. And I had never heard of Pruno. But Pruno is something that prison inmates make uh, to make an alcoholic beverage. It's also called hooch. But anyway, 19 people got botulism from bad Pruno. Two of the 29 confirmed foodborne botulism cases was from home canned goods. It didn't go into much detail. So in 2015, we had 39 cases of botulism foodborne. But 27 of those cases all occurred at one place. It was a church picnic. Someone had bought potato salad and it was made with canned, home canned potatoes that had botulism. And again, we have Alaska. Uh, there was a case from, I guess four cases from Furman Seal Flipper and one associated with beets roasted in aluminum foil and then kept at room temperature for several days and then made into soup. So two people got it from that. 2014, again, we have Alaska. There's one associated with stink hats, type of fermented fish, I think. There's three cases, I guess, with that. Three cases, again, with seal oil. And there was one with, well, that actually it affected two people with pasta and jarred pesto. And one with home canned tomato sauce, which affected two people. And there were two deaths reported. In 2013, according to the CDC, they said there was one associated with homemade churchy, a pickled vegetable dish. And that was probably associated with four cases. One again, this had to be Alaska with fermented fish heads for two cases, and one with seal oil blubber. All eight patients survived. However, I don't think that's accurate because I remember reading and I went and found the article. And let me read this to you. Okay, the gentleman in that picture is a lawyer from the state of Washington. He's 67 years old. Now, he woke up one night with double vision and he wasn't sure why. Well, it turns out that he had borrowed a pressure cooker from a friend and used an old family canning recipe to can some elk meat from a hunting trip. And he figured he had too much meat to deal with, so that pressure cooker was pretty small. So what he said is he already browned the meat in a cast iron pan, so he decided to shortcut the process. Once the jars sealed airtight, he would take them out of the pressure cooker and start a new batch. The next day, he heard a pop in his pantry, which I remember as a child was a signal for we have lost the seal. So he ate the jar and was fine. The following week, he heard another lid pop, just as he had before. He found that jar, stuck it in the fridge, and a few days later, he ate supper. As he said, this time it didn't work out. It started with an upset stomach, but then he got the blurred vision and other signs and he was taken to the ER. So according to Washington State food expert, Zena Edwards, she said to remember he stopped cooking the jars of elk meat when he heard the seals lock in place. And Edwards says that was O'Connell's nearly fatal mistake. Because the strange thing about the bacteria that causes botulism is it thrives when deprived of oxygen. By shortcutting the cooking time, O'Connell failed to kill the bacteria. Instead, he sealed it into the perfect environment for it to produce the poisonous toxin. Edward says, reaffirms two cardinal rules of home canning. Plan before you can, and when you're in doubt, throw out. Now, I still don't understand this. I don't understand if you're going through a pressure canning and you got it set, how you would know that the can's sealed. Uh, you know, it's, it's a timed process. So I don't know if really what he means he cut the time, or was he really water bath canning in a pressure cooker? I don't know. But anyway, that is supreme stupidity. And by someone who went to school for many, many years because he was a lawyer. So in 2012, we had a bunch associated with prison pruno again. And then we had two with a meat and pasta sauce uh, in Michigan, and that was home canned. And then one, a problem with home canned beets. 2011, we had another eight cases associated with prison pruno. And then there were outbreaks uh, in Alaska with salmon eggs. And finally, 2010, there were only nine cases. 
There are two outbreaks. One was caused by seal blubber with two cases in Alaska, and another by unknown food vehicle associated with two cases in Alaska. So what does this tell you? Well, number one, never drink any prison pruno if offered any. Number two, Alaska has a problem with how they are preserving some of their food. They're using ancient ways that are not accepted for food safety and it is causing problems. They have problems with fish heads, which is called stinky heads, fermented fish eggs, which they call stinky eggs because I bet they are, fermented beaver tail, fermented seal flipper, fermented walrus flipper, fermented whale, seal oil, and dried unsalted fish. So unless you're in Alaska and um, canning the native ways or food preserving, I don't think you have to worry about these. So if you see it, I mean, there was some cases caused by home canners by sheer stupidity. And there were others that we just don't know. It doesn't give you enough about the process. We're not sure, do they follow the rules like they should. But overall, I think you will see, it really doesn't happen that much. So don't be scared of canning because of botulism. Follow the accepted rules every time. If you don't, start canning, start canning that product again, or as they say, when in doubt, throw it out. You know, I recently got rid of, I don't even want to tell you how many jars because it's super, super embarrassing. But when I went through my inventory, I found a lot of them in the back. I thought I was doing a good job of rotating, guess not. And I found a lot of jars from 2016 and older. Now, would have they been okay? They probably would. But I just decided not to take the chance and I dumped them. So I kept a few from 2017. Everything else is 2018 or newer because I'd rather be safe. But am I scared of botulism? No. I follow the rules and I think if you do too, you don't need to be scared either. Happy canning. This is Prepper Potpourri saying please subscribe, share the knowledge, and thumbs up if you like this video.